be a Christmas uh, budget speech in this chamber, and how I wish it could be finally one full of good cheer. How I wish it could be about positive initiative and about grateful gesture that can help everyone in our community to enjoy this special time of the year going to 2017 full confidence that we can all thrive. Yet here I am again, standing to move a package of budget proposal tonight with a heavy heart. As, you, as you're all aware that the Prime Minister, Mrs. May, and Mr. Hammond have chosen to stick to the uh, policy of their predecessors. And therefore, this third pro program continues, and so does the need to make significant cuts. The government may have revised its over optimistic projections of the time it would uh, require to turn the national deficit position into surplus, but the overall objective remains the same. We have hoped the new Prime Minister would have changed some of Mr. Cameron's policy, and there was indication of this in her early speeches, but the local government continued to bear the brunt of the austerity regime. Mrs. May talked about providing a helping hand to those who just about manage it, but we haven't seen much of that demonstrating what is being done. The government has therefore been, the government has said there will be no further cuts to welfare benefits. That's not generous when you consider that, that already there's been too many cuts to welfare benefits and we're beginning to see that people of Oldham are actually really being hurt. The council has to deal with the implication of these cuts and the burden shifts from central government to local government. The autumn statement on 27th of, 23rd of November could have been an opportunity to support local government, but it wasn't. The Chancellor confirmed that the government will continue in overall plans for the departmental resource spending set out in the spending review 2015. As such, there are no expected changes in revenue support grant funding and all those four-year grants. This still means a reduction of 20 million, sorry, 10 million pounds in RSG from this year to next. And since 2013-14, it, it will have reduced from 85 million to 30.4 million. That's a reduction of over 50 million pounds from there. That is a massive cut, and our same targets have been the consequences of that. However, Mr. Hamer, what's interesting is that in the autumn statement, the government has found 240 million pounds to expand grammar schools, which is an outdated policy and an approach which is at odds with many educationist views. The autumn statement also failed to mention anything about adult social care. Absolutely nothing in the published document was said about adult social care. And yet we know spending nationally on older people has fallen by 9% in real terms over the last five years because of government costs. But that has meant even, <clears throat> even bigger drop in more than a quarter in the number of people getting help in care homes, nursing homes, and in their homes for daily tasks they are unable to perform without help. Tomorrow, Mr. Mayor, is an important day for local government finance. It's a day when we will receive confirmation of our funding from government. However, media reported today in advance of the provisional local government finance settlement that government will announce tomorrow that local government will be able to increase level of adult social care PSEP 3% next year and in 18 and 19 by 3%. That's not dealing with the issue. It moves the burden from government to local taxpayers. In the level of council tax is already high, and it is completely unfair that the government expects the people of Oldham to pick up the bill for national funding crisis. You'll recall that 2% a week charge in 1617 raised just over 1.5 million, whilst in Stockport, 2% raised over 2.5 million. The uh, 1.5 million that we raised was nowhere near enough to fund the cost of 2.7 million impact 
in applying the government policy on living wage to social uh, care sector. This council had to deal with the balance. In 1718, the, the continued pressure on living wage is 2.445 million, and we'll have, we'll have built this in our plan. But even with a proposed 3% uh, increase, based on our current estimate, it would only generate 2.389 million, which isn't enough to deal with only one aspect of the social uh, care pressures. One step the government could have taken to bring uh, forward the allegation of better care fund, care fund grants to council. The proposed funding uh, backloaded with only a small portion of grants in 1780, increasing to 2019-20. The government seems unwilling to change the funding arrangement, but uh, content to shift the burden to local council. This is the reason why the budget saving required for order is over 20 million pounds. Although times are hard, we're still investing in the future. In 2016, we celebrated the opening of Old Town Hall and the rebirth of Civic Pride in our town centre. We have opened two new leisure centres, attracted new invest inward investment like a DPD, Depot at Chelaton and RV dealership Jardim Motors at Westwood, and also secured funding for our charity centre and a new Colosseum Theatre. We have continued to step up and try to help most vulnerable people through fantastic schemes like Warm Home Order and help residents who work through better, better our new careers at Fastener Service and help those local families that are just the latest to be hit by the new benefit cap. And yet as a council trying to make a difference, to step in where the government does not and deliver aspirational hope, we find ourselves hit by an eight consecutive year of significant funding costs that has seen us have to co more than 212 million pounds since 2009. Our achievements in spite of the, this backdrop are impressive but strain on our finances mean the pressure is too great and ordinary people will inevitably suffer. As a cooperative council, we are different from the government in moral, in deeds, and in action. We believe the continued delivery of our core services such as social care, safeguarding vulnerable people, roads, waste collection are not options. Not optional. They are vital to people's everyday lives, and if we do not provide them, people will suffer. The proposal <coughs> I put before you tonight are the first part of our, our work to bridge the estimated 2.315 million savings required to deliver back balanced budget for 1718. These measures will provide savings of 6.147 million towards the gap. This will mean that there is still 14.168 million to be found. And we are already have done some work and further proposals will be presented to the scrutiny meeting in January. The package before you contains 37 budget reduction proposals, each have gone, each have been very tough to agree. And can I at this point, Chair, thank the staff in particular our Director of Finance and Rice for the hard work that she's done, but also to all the cabinet members who have been really uh, extremely careful in, in finding the savings we try to protect the frontline services. There's details uh, on each of the proposals in the Green Book. Uh, there are other proposals that have been deferred and we want to consider uh, the outcomes of the consultation before we bring them back in here for uh, consideration in the new year. We're also waiting, uh, Mr. Mayor, for the confirmation from the uh, provisional local government finance announcements, as well as uh, levies from Greater Manchester. Whilst it's been disappointing to make so many cuts, the government has announced that Gordon will be one of the six pilot opportunity areas and will receive a share of 60 million to support 
uh, across early years, schools and further education. We have a strong track record of delivery here in Northern, and we have invested in uh, Education and Skills Commission. So this just shows our commitment to furthering the life chances of our young people. And we are very keen, Mr. Co Mr. Mayor, to work with the government to start a scheme as soon as possible to benefit our young people. We would also prefer to work with the government on any initiative that can help hold them in any way. There are many, many tough financial decisions, again, uh, there are many, many tough financial decisions to be made that lie ahead now for all of And this isn't an easy job. We are experiencing taking them. However, I pledge we will do our very best to face these unprecedented challenges to deliver the best possible outcomes that we can for our people. Oldham needs to continue its improvement journey. It cannot stand still and give up. We will not shake from that commitment. We will continue to invest and develop our towns, town centre and local economy. The schemes like Oldham Town Hall Project and Princess Gate, new residential development, and developing key employment site will generate business rates and council tax income that we desperately need to help our economy to thrive. We will never abandon our <coughs> ambition to this borough and prospect of our place and its people, even at Brothers Harbour. The message from the people of Oldham about this Christmas to both Mrs. May and Mr. Hammond is that you'll never weaken our spirit our resolve, our determination, our ambition to do better. That is why this administration message is unlike yours, is one that still offers hope to the residents of Oldham. <coughs> that the moral difference between you and us, it is why you don't understand places like Oldham. And you never have. And it is why you will never prosper in this council chamber, now or in the future. I move this to message. Councillor Stratton, second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I rise to second the budget proposals for 2017-18, and I echo everything that our has just said, and thank him for the work that he, officers, and cabinet members are putting to this most difficult task. Tonight, I want to focus on fairness in my remarks. As a place and as a council, Fairness seems to be becoming the overriding issue for Oldham on so many levels now. Whether that's in terms of how we're funded or about our access to growth, infrastructure and opportunities. 